In this video, we're going to focus on factoring polynomials of higher degree. So let's try this example. x to the fourth power plus 8x squared minus 9. How can we factor this particular example? What would you do? Now you can use factoring by substitution. Let's replace x squared with a variable, let's say a. If a is x squared, that means that a squared is equal to x to the fourth. So we can rewrite this as a squared plus 8 times a minus 9. Now it's in quadratic form. What two numbers multiply to negative 9 but that add to 8? This is going to be positive 9 and negative 1. 9 times negative 1 is negative 9, but 9 plus negative 1 is positive 8. So to factor it, it's going to be a plus 9 times a minus 1. Now at this point, we can replace a with x squared. So this is also equal to x squared plus 9 and x squared minus 1. So now, x squared plus 9, we can't really factor it. If we do, we're going to have imaginary numbers. So right now, we can leave it as x squared plus 9. x squared minus 1, we can use the difference of squares technique to factor it. It's going to be x plus 1 and x minus 1. So that's the final answer. By the way, if you've covered imaginary numbers already, you could represent x squared plus 9 as x plus 3i and x minus 3i, if you learned already. If you haven't, you could simply leave your answer like this. Now let's try another example. Try this one, x to the fourth power minus 5x squared minus 36. So we're going to set the letter a equal to x squared. So just as before, if a is x squared, that means a squared is x to the fourth power. So what two numbers multiply to negative 36, but that add to the middle coefficient, negative 5? So we can make a list. We have 1 and negative 36. 2 times 18 is 36. There's also a 3 and 12, and 4 and 9. Notice that 4 times negative 9 is negative 36, but 4 plus negative 9 is negative 5. But first, let's replace x to the fourth with a squared, and x squared with a. So now we can factor it like this. This is going to be a plus 4, and a minus 9. Now, in our next step, we're going to replace a with x squared. So it's x squared plus 4 and x squared minus 9. Now, we can use the difference of squares method to factor x squared minus 9. So the final answer is going to be x squared plus 4. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. One is going to be positive, and the other is going to be negative. So this is the answer. That's how you can factor this particular expression. Try this one. x to the 6th power plus 11 x cubed plus 24. So this time we're going to set a equal to x cubed. And therefore a squared is going to be x to the 6th power. So this is going to be a squared plus 11a plus 24. Now what two numbers multiply to 24 but add to 11? So it's not going to be 1 and 24 or 2 and 12. However, 3 times 8 is 24, but 3 plus 8 adds up to 11. So we can write this as a plus 3 times a plus 8. At this point, we can replace a with x cubed. 
So we have x cubed plus 3 and x cubed plus 8. Now we can factor this expression, x cubed plus 8, using the sum of cubes technique. We could use the same formula on x cubed plus 3, but if we do so, we're going to deal with radicals, and let's avoid that. The equation that we need is this one right here, a to the third plus b to the third. That's equal to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So this is going to be x cubed plus 8. So notice that in this particular example, a is equal to x. If a to the third is x to the third, a is equal to x. Now, if b to the third is equal to 8, that means b is the cube root of 8, which is 2. So following the formula, this is going to be x plus 2. a squared is basically a times a, or x times x. That's x squared. ab, x times 2, is 2x. And b squared, 2 times 2 is 4. So that's how we can factor x cubed plus 8. So the final answer is x cubed plus 3 times x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4. Let's try a different example. Let's try this one. 5x cubed minus 10x squared plus 4x minus 8. So how can we factor this particular expression? If you have a polynomial with four terms, always check to see if you can factor by grouping. To do so, the first two coefficients must have the same ratio as the last two coefficients. So negative 10 divided by 5 is equal to negative 2. Negative 8 divided by 4 is equal to negative 2. If you see that, that means you can factor by grouping. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take out the GCF, the greatest common factor, in the first two terms. In the first two terms, we can take out a 5x squared. 5x cubed divided by 5x squared is x. Negative 10x squared divided by 5x squared is negative 2. Now, in the last two terms, we can take out a 4. 4x divided by 4 is x. Negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. Now, we can take out another factor, x minus 2. If we remove x minus 2 from the first term, we're going to have 5x squared left over. And if we take out x minus 2 from the second term, we're going to have plus 4. So this is how you factor it. It's x minus 2 times 5x squared plus 4. And you can check it. You can confirm it. If you FOIL this expression, you're going to get the original answer. Try this one. x to the 6th power minus 2x to the 4th power minus 4x squared plus 8. So notice that negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2. 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. So therefore, we can use the same technique as the last example. We can factor by grouping. So in the first two terms, let's take out the greatest common factor, which is x to the fourth. x to the sixth divided by x to the fourth is x squared. Negative 2x to the fourth divided by x to the fourth is negative 2. In the last two terms, we could take out a 4. And this will also give us x squared minus 2. So now let's factor out uh, this term, x squared minus 2. And then we're going to have x to the 4 minus 4 inside this uh, parentheses. Now we can use the difference of squares technique on this one because we can take the square root of 4 and the square root of x to the 4th. The square root of x to the 4th is x squared, because x squared times x squared is x to the 4th. The square root of 4 is 2, so we have a, a plus 2 and a minus 2. Now, because these two are the same, we can collect them together. And we can write the final answer 
like this. We can say it's uh, x squared plus 2 times x squared minus 2 squared. So this is it.